A good afternoon and a warm welcome to the Mahindra Rajapaksa International Stadium here in Surya Veva, Hambantota, the southern province of Sri Lanka. We are coming to you live on uh, Channel I and of course uh, Sri Lanka Cricket uh, YouTube platform. These uh, beautiful uh, pictures of the venue, the ground and its uh, surroundings. As you see, a lot of uh, greenery around, a lot of uh, water as well, lakes, uh, rivers and uh, lagoons and of course... Uh, it's a very beautiful uh, out there. And today's game in this uh, under-19 women's uh, Tri-Nations uh, tournament, Australia versus England. The two touring teams uh, are going to battle it out head-to-head. -head. Of course, in the first game, uh, England uh, overcame Australia, winning their match uh, last week, a few days ago. And Australia, after that very good win versus Sri Lanka yesterday, will be looking to come back and beat England. Uh, it's... Uh, Mostly cloudy, uh, it says, but uh, to me it's uh, very hot out there and it's very warm, very humid as well. But the rain predictions, the weather forecast said there might be some rain later on in the evening today. And uh, that's what we have been told by the uh, weather department of uh, Sri Lanka. But I'll tell you, it's uh, very warm out there, it's uh, burning hot. And uh, uh, speaking uh, to a couple of England uh, players as well as Australians, you know, they were finding it really difficult. Three, four games uh, completed uh, so far. Sri Lanka have won two, uh, lost one. They beat England, they beat Australia. Lost to Australia yesterday in the final uh, delivery. England, of course, as I mentioned, uh, beat Australia in the first, uh, first game uh, they played. And this is their second game uh, between those two arch rivals who have always battled it out uh, in the field. Whatever format, to whatever game it has been, when it uh, comes uh, to cricket. And then we have one more left uh, game left uh, for tomorrow in this uh, T20 tournament when uh, Sri Lanka take on England before we head over to goal for the 50-over uh, tournament involving the three teams in three limited-over encounters uh, in a few days' uh, time. So it's uh, obviously going to be a great uh, battle. Very important uh, for both teams, especially for Australia playing their final uh, T20. They'll be looking uh, to uh, come up uh, with a win as you see, the sun uh, baking down here over the grounds at uh, Surya Weber. This was yesterday's game. It was a thriller. Sri Lanka batting first made 132 for 7. Carvin Divita, fantastic 39 contributions from Nane, Karanet, Anjali and uh, Sewandi. Morton was outstanding. 2 for 12, so was Clark, 2 for 18. Berry and uh, Williamson uh, picking up a week at each. Australia chasing down that target. Got home in the final delivery, thanks to a fantastic uh, half century. Uh, not out by their skipper Lucy Hamilton. Leon's uh, 30, Briscoe and Dulwin contributing as well. Sewandi was good, 1 for 15. Kimhani Bolwell picking up a wicket. Netanjali and uh, Vyanga were very economical. But Australia were good on the day, winning by 7 wickets. So these are the scenes. This is the beautiful uh, pictures here coming to you from Amo Camera One, doing a fantastic job. The aerial view of the ground and its uh, surroundings. And uh, this was the teams uh, warming up earlier in the day, as we say a uh, very good afternoon to Paulina said DSV Jayaratna. Good afternoon, Ricky, and good afternoon to all our viewers from the Mahindraja Paksa International Cricket Stadium here in Surya Hambantota. As we the, see the Australian girls doing their warm-ups and the English girls too. That's the, the Australian team doing their drills, the, which we had uh, seen this morning, this afternoon. And the English team also doing their drills. Cammy Smith uh, there. Amy Smith uh, dressed up. So the English girls also doing their drills. It will be pretty interesting to see this game between Australia and England. England won the first encounter and the Australians uh, really must be wanting to have a go at this time because they got the better of the Sri Lankan team yesterday. See some beautiful pictures uh, and the surroundings of the Mahindraj Paksa International Cricket Stadium here in Ampantata. A lot of greenery as Ricky was talking to you earlier. 
lakes, uh, lagoons, ponds, uh, everything all around here. Interesting place, very interesting place to visit in Sri Lanka, the northern province, so the southern province, sorry. As we go down to the toss, uh, it's uh, Ricky Sims down there in the toss. Good afternoon and once again a warm welcome to uh, Surya Weber, the Mahindra Rajapaksa International Stadium. We are here for game number five of the Under-19 Women's uh, Tri-Nations Tournament and today's game is uh, between the two visiting countries, Australia and England. We have the two uh, captains uh, with us today. Captain in Australia is Amy Smith, uh, Josie Grooves uh, for England. Our match referee, uh, Nevin Noya, and the fourth umpire, Deidunu De Silva. So Josie will uh, toss the coin. Tails. is the ball. And so it's tails. Uh, we'll have a bat first. So uh, tails was the uh, curl and uh, Amy has uh, won the toss. Amy, what have you decided to do? I uh, will have a decide to bat first, please. Uh, any uh, speak, uh, d uh, major reason uh, for that uh, that uh, you have decided uh, to go ahead and bat first? Oh, I think it'd just be nice. We've bowled first um, each game so far, so I think it'd be nice, less pressure on our batters and p make them play how they want to play. So, and then you know, I think we've got a really strong bowling lineup, so it'd be clearer what we have to do in the second innings. Uh, this was the same uh, wicket we used for the first two games uh, last week. How do you read this uh, wicket, Amy? Oh, I think it'll play pretty similar. Like it was a little bit slow off the deck, but uh, nothing. I don't think it will change too much. I think it'll be a good batting wicket. Yesterday, Australia had a good game uh, a beating Sri Lanka, chasing that time after winning the toss. Today, you're b batting first. What do you think is a good target uh, to uh, put on the board? Oh, I think 130 plus. I think uh, scores recently have been around 120, 130, and it's been close games. So if we can get 130 plus, uh, that, yeah, we'll feel confident coming into our bowling innings. Um, but yeah, I guess you never know. But uh, yeah, that, I think that's what we're going to be trying to get. Captain in Australia today, happy and you're looking forward to it? Yeah, I'm looking forward for the opportunity. Um, you don't get this chance um, any day, so yeah, really happy for the opportunity I get. And uh, how have you enjoyed uh, Sri Lanka so far? Yeah, it's been really good. Um, we've got a few experiences with safaris and that, so um, today's an extra hot day, so see how the girls pull up um, after this game, but it's been a great experience. Good luck to you, Amy, in the captaincy, and good luck uh, to Australia for this game. Sweet, lovely. Thank you. Josie, you have uh, lost the toss. If you had won the toss today, what would you have done? Yeah, we were also going to bat. Um, looks great wicket, but we're equally comfy chasing, I think. It's absolute belter, so pretty happy either way. Yes, uh, you beat uh, Australia the other day batting uh, first, but it was the other wicket which was used back to the uh, wicket, I think, uh, where you played Australia initially in that game you won. How do you see the surface today? Same as uh, it has been all uh, tournament? Um, yeah, I mean, we're expecting it to play pretty well. I mean, it's turned around pretty nicely and obviously we've played on this one before and had a pretty good result, so take confidence with that. Ha had a good look of uh, yesterday's game between uh, Sri Lanka and Australia? Yeah, we um, watched a little bit, a little bit of it live, and then a little bit on the on the stream. But saw it was a good close game, which is what you like to see. So, uh, Amy said that 130 looks a good score on the surface. What do you think? Uh? Yeah, um, I mean that, that does seem to be a score that's been challenging teams. I think, like if we were batting first, probably look to get a few more runs. But happy chasing 130, so don't mind that. Did you enjoy the uh, safaris as well at Udawalawe? Yeah, absolutely. That was re really cool. I mean. It, we don't have elephants in England, so I <laughs> haven't really seen one before, so it was quite nice to be there. Good luck to you, uh, Josie. Good luck to England for this game. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that's the news uh, from the centre. The Australian under-19 captain Amy Smith has won the toss and elected to bat first. There you are. We heard from Ricky Sims that the Australian captain won the toss and decided to bat first. They're planning to set up a total of 130 plus. And there you see the team card of the Australians, McKeon, Pelly, Delwyn, Smith, Finn, La Rosa, Briscoe, Clark, Williamson, Eve and Morton. That's the Australian team for today's game. And uh, we see the English card, Perrin, Thomas, Grievecock, no Novgrave, Surain Kumar, Grooves, Stonehouse, Ward, Lambert, Cotin Coleman, Lee, so that's the England team for the today's game. 
So it's definitely going to be an interesting game because the the English uh, team got the better of the Australians in the first game by 32 runs and the Australians must be determined to get back, get to win in this game. They decided to, they won the toss and decided to bat first and they want to test the strength of their bowlers. While well, Jesse Groves uh, said, that the, that's the English captain said, she would like to bat first and set up a total and to see how their bowlers could defend it. So it's going to be definitely an interesting game as I say. Good afternoon to Ricky Sims who has joined me in the box. Good afternoon, Ricky. Good afternoon, Paulinas. Good afternoon to all of our viewers watching this game. If you're at home in Sri Lanka watching on Channel I, good afternoon once again. And if you're out there in England, it's morning time. A very good morning to you. If it's in Australia, a good evening as well. Or whichever part of the world you are watching this game on Sri Lanka Cricket on our YouTube channels, a warm welcome uh, to the fifth game. England uh, versus uh, Australia in this uh, women's under-19 Tri-Nations uh, tournament. Uh, the uh, England dugout getting ready to get on uh, to the field. Australia won the toss uh, and uh, decided uh, to uh, bat first. So yesterday they decided to bowl first versus uh, Sri Lanka. Today they are going to bat first. They are testing their bench uh, strength. They are testing their abilities, uh, all aspects of the game. Uh, how are they going to manage batting first? How are they good at chasing? You know, it has uh, been a very good tournament uh, for them. They've lost the first two games. They won yesterday, but uh, it is opportunities for all the entire squad. They have been uh, changing uh, their team. Uh, four players uh, who missed out the earlier game come into the team uh, today, so that's been their rotation policy. Their regular skipper, Lucy Hamilton, is not playing this game. She played uh, the first three games. Today they're captained by Amy Smith, uh, one of their senior players. And as she mentioned at the toss, she's looking forward to this challenge. She said, the captain in Australia is a huge, uh, even at uh, under-19 level. And uh, wishing her the best of luck as well and, and the team. These are the parents who have uh, come over, family, friends, uh, to uh, watch these games. They have been here from the start, from day one, supporting their teams, both from England and Australia. And uh, they have been enjoying uh, their trip uh, to the southern province uh, of uh, Sri Lanka. So much to see, a lot of greenery. A lot of uh, nature, wildlife, as uh, the captains mentioned. They have been uh, 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 going uh, to these uh, the parks uh, as well at Udawalavi over the weekend when they had uh, a few off days. And uh, the skies, as we saw in our weather report earlier, they said uh, cloudy conditions. But so far, so good. It's a blue skies. Just a bit of a, a grey sort of a coming in towards the right side of the ground. But certainly there is no uh, threat of rain at all at the moment. And these are the England supporters. And they enjoying the weather on those uh, green banks uh, to the far part of the ground, right opposite us, under the trees. They are really been enjoying. Whenever England has played, that has been their spot. And they have come over to support the, the girls. Uh, the two umpires uh, for today, Chandrika Amarasinghe, very senior now at uh, this level, at the international level as well. Nilandi Silva has been around for a long time. Uh, he's done a, a lot of games, first class cricket, women's cricket, you name it, school cricket, under 19. And uh, two very good umpires out there in the centre. De Duna Di Silva, she's the fourth umpire. And uh, Nevin Noya is uh, our match referee uh, for today. So everything is set and ready to go here in the fifth game. It's going to be a good battle. Australia. As we mentioned, we'll be looking uh, to come back and try and beat England. They lost the first game to England. England will try to uh, dominate, try to get a victory. That will be their second. So that tomorrow's game against Sri Lanka will sort of be like a final if uh, England wins today. So it's, uh, we'll have to wait and see 40 overs uh, to be played today. And I'm sure we are going to get a good game in as well. Yes, uh, the TV umpire being Renmo Martinez once again. Ricky, you missed it. Anyway, TV umpire Renmo Martinez. The scorers today is for us. Uh, here we have Andra Vagudapala and Chetna Surasinghe and Mohammad Rahidi is at the score box. So there you see the two Australian batters walking in. Well, uh, Ince McKeon, the uh, opening batter for Australia, opening the innings. Yesterday too she opened the innings. She got up, uh, got Australia to off to a good start yesterday in his McKeon. Uh, Kit, uh, Pelly is back in the lineup. She didn't play yesterday's game. So she will be opening uh, today. Yesterday, uh, uh, Mackeon opened the batting uh, with uh, Leons. Leons is not playing uh, uh, today, if I'm right, uh, uh, 
uh, as well uh, uh, Paulina so that's the switch that's the rotation policy they have been using and given all these girls the experience to play out in these uh, conditions here in Hambantota in uh, Sri Lanka and it's a, a wonderful location uh, for them they are enjoying their uh, cricket as you see she's uh, playing a third game and off the mark yeah, uh, straight away a bit of hesitancy a bit of a misfield didn't gather it cleanly and uh, let's uh, Pelly get off uh, the mark of uh, the first ball yes the Australians have given even chance for everyone who's uh, in the tour squad they've had four changes almost in every game and they have their rotation policy they see the matches are three matches average of 5.50 57.89 the strike rate that's a McKeon Alex Stone now is the bowler 7.1 overs, 37 runs, 3 wickets in this series left arm round the wicket, short down the leg side, pulled away nicely yes, so she's had a good tournament so far Stone now she's been very good with the ball for England up front has got wickets, she's come back in the death as well she's been one of their go-to bowlers we have seen quite a few left arm seamers uh, from Australia and England we have uh, Hamilton and Loresa from Australia. The left arm seamers have stone house for England. They've all been really good. Oh, it's a bit of pace as well. And what is good to see that uh, these bowlers have adjusted the conditions uh, quickly. They use the slow ball well. They use that uh, slower short delivery as well to try and uh, get that uh, miss hit. Out think uh, the batters. He shot and worked away on the leg side, but no run straight to the fielder. His toe now had been bowling quite well during the series. Just two dot balls in this over after now. Two runs given away in the first two deliveries. Well, the Australian batters looking for a total of 130 plus. That was what uh, M.A. Smith told at the, during the toss, Ricky. Yes, so 130 has been the go-to score, isn't it? Uh, uh, so far, Sri Lanka got 132 uh, as well, and Australia one of the last balls. Sri Lanka defended 128 versus England and 117 versus Australia. England uh, defended a good score versus Australia as well. So yes, that has been the sort of uh, the uh, pass score. And if you could get to 130, 135, I'll tell you it's going to be very difficult for the uh, chasing team. Well, that's the end of that first over. Just two runs coming off it. Australia, one, two for no loss after one over. Everyone else just go somewhere and I'll see. So in the earlier game between these uh, two teams, England batted first and uh, went on to make 146 and Australia only managed 111. So Australia will be having that on their mind knowing the England batting has been strong. But they will also remember that Sri Lanka defended 128 uh, versus England. So if they get to 130, 135, that's a very defendable uh, total and that will be their initial uh, target. Charlotte Lambert, just uh, two games. She's been a touch expensive uh, so far, but uh, we'll be looking to redeem herself in this match. It's pulling right arm over the wicket, that one pitched out. It's a drop chance. Well, 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 well. That was played straight back at her. Catchable height, got both hands to it and spilt it. Is she saying that I think she lost it in the sun? That's what she's trying to uh, tell to her teammates. She says it, she suddenly lost it and uh, she didn't spot it at the last moment. Very unfortunate. But definitely that is a takeable chance. That's going wide down outside the off stump and wide signal by umpire Neil Aldi Silva. There have been a lot of uh, drop catchers in this uh, tournament. Uh, yesterday we saw Sri Lanka drop a few as well which cost them. Uh, Sri Lanka were brilliant in their first game versus Australia. They held on to some superb catches. But since then, 
even the Australian field in is not as expected we always expect australians uh, to be brilliant whatever format uh, but they haven't been up to the mark england have dropped a few chances as well even uh, uh, sri lanka so have been quite a few drop chances and some of them have been uh, very simple uh, chances and this was a big opportunity especially for lambert because she didn't have uh, a couple of uh, good games uh, with the ball so this was an opportunity to come back pick up an early wicket you know get her confidence back and uh, Macion was very lucky to survive that one. It's definitely Ricky. If she had got that wicket early, and then she would have been really confident. But of course, see, she has come back. That short and pulled away nicely by Macion. It's going towards the mid wicket boundary, but there is a fielder there. So just a single takes the Australians go on to four. Australia making four changes in this game, giving even chances for all the members in the squad. You see the replay of that short issue and pulled away nicely. Lambert bowled three overs in the previous game, giving him 30 runs. Economy rate of 10 per over. She definitely might be wanting to have a better session today. Well, left alone, uh, Australia making a few changes. I said Amy Smith back into the side, captain in this game, in place of uh, the regular skipper Lucy Hamilton. Bonnie Berry is uh, not uh, playing today. We have taken Williamson, who is in. Elena Lorosa is uh, back into the side. Hasrat Gill is not playing today. Grace Lands has been uh, left out as well. And uh, Sienna Eve, who is bowled brilliantly in the tournament, is back in the side. She didn't play yesterday. Samara Dulbin, Maggie Clark, Lucy Finn. Is uh, playing this match, so is Juliet Morton. Bowled superbly yesterday. Kate Pelly is back in the side. So yes, Australia ringing those uh, changes, making four changes uh, to their lineup for today's match uh, from yesterday's one. I see down the leg side and a wide signal by umpire Nilan De Silva. That's the second wide in this over. Well, at least some of the players who have done uh, performed very well during the series has been left out in today's game for Australia. That's worked away nicely towards the fine leg boundary. That's a f it's gone for four. That's the first boundary for the day. Yes, sir. I think uh, she'll be very relieved. Uh, fairly. She didn't score in that game against England, was out early for naught. But uh, today she's managed uh, to get off the mark and now a neatly played boundary. Just a deft touch using the pace of the bowler. And you were talking about the changes. Yes, it's all about opportunities. You know, to play at this level, to represent your country, it's all about opportunities. And Australia making maximum use of their full strength squad. The 15 players they have uh, brought over. You know, they're giving them all opportunities, rotating uh, the team. That's beautifully played. This is a delicate uh, cricket. Just wait and fight. Rode the bounce really well, angled the bat to give it direction. And that's all it needed. Quick outfield here at uh, Surya Weber. And uh, four more runs uh, to the total. So that's the end of the second over. It's uh, 13 for no loss, Australia. Joe now to continue. Left arm round the wicket. That's a good delivery. Well, it's pretty hot out there in the centre. So that was another expensive over by uh, the England bowler. That uh, second over, Charlotte. Australia 14 for Norris. We are in the third over. John House has been one of the pick of the English bowlers. Should have had a good series. Bowling a second over. 
So she picked up a two for 17 in that game of four was Boulder Maiden as well against Australia the last time. She got the early wickets, so remember. That That's shot though. Pele looks in fine form. She's out there with a purpose. And that purpose is to score runs. Anything loose, anything short. So far, she's executed her shots are really well. No rash cricket. These are good cricketing shots. Just playing the ball on its merit. And uh, putting uh, the England bowlers under pressure early on. Yes, definitely. That was got uh, over the top of the closing fielders. That's a short fine leg there. Again, nicely worked away on the onside, but straight to the field at this time. See, three fours in the show up to now. So, Pelly on uh, 13. Still now spawning her second over. Seven runs given away by her. But... Uh, there's a change Stone. in the field, uh, strengthening the offside is uh, Stonehouse. Another extra cover coming. Now that was uh, a bluff. She strengthened the offside, put in a fielder, uh, but went for the short delivery. She has uh, a deep square leg and a deep fine leg. Those are the two fielders on the boundary. Third man is in the circle, so she cannot afford to give any width uh, outside the off stump, especially if it's short, she will be punished. But that's good ball in the slow delivery on the stumps. Three overs completed, 18 without loss. Australia 18 for no loss after two, uh, three overs. Yeah. Coaching Coleman being brought in after that expensive over from uh, Charlotte Lambert. She gave away 11 runs in that over. Three overs, 18 runs in economic rate of uh, six per over. Yes, she bowled the three overs for 10 in that last game versus uh, Australia. In the game they won, she was very economical. She hasn't been able to uh, pick up a wicket, but uh, she's been a difficult uh, customer to get away. Quite tall and uh, has a high arm action as well. There you see, gives it a bit of yeah, and there she's got the wicket. Now she's bowled very economically, I have said all along, and she started off this over a second ball wicket uh, to tell you. Cody Coleman, she's picked up a Maggie on. She hasn't got much of the strike, just faced the seven deliveries for three runs. But it was flighted on that off stump. And uh, Maggie on was uh, going for it, played it uppishly, didn't middle that at all. Straightforward catch. And uh, England have managed to uh, pick up uh, their first wicket. Lambert, the catcher, she's out for three, 18 for one. That center. So someone had dual win in the new banner. They yeah, are four figures, 13 runs he hired, 30 in the total, 6.50 the average, strike rate of 54.17. Played three matches. That is this is the third game that is in this series. She got a start yesterday, but unfortunately did not uh, get going. And uh, 
She'll feel looking for this opportunity. She's, she's come out there early in just the fourth over. There's lots more overs to play with. And uh, we'll come back to that. This was that dismissal. Looking uh, to open up play through the offside. But just did not get an execution time in nothing. Oh, beautifully ball. Now that was poor, poor decision making by Dulwin. What was she trying to do? Come down the track. And she had no chance of uh, getting back. The bills have been uh, whipped off in a space of uh, four deliveries. Coleman has uh, picked up uh, two wickets. Ward was the wicket keeper. Easy stumping for her. Laps of a concentration, I would call it nervous out there. Samara Dulwin coming out to meet the ball early in the innings. She was not there at all. She was out by a long, long way. And England have uh, picked up two wickets uh, after the first three overs. Australia were going well. But Coleman has uh, changed the complexion. It's uh, 18 for two. Uh, Samara Dulwin goes. Stumped by Ward without scoring. Captain? 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 Yes. Captain? 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 Well, Australia and Dia Straits at 18 for two. Coleman getting both the wickets in this over. She must be wanting to put things in order. The captain. That's fantastic bowling, Amy Smith. She's had a very poor tournament so far. Played uh, two games before this. Uh, didn't play yesterday's game, just of 16 runs. She's captain in this side, so she's one of their senior players at under 19 level. Highly potential, highly talented. And she'll be looking forward to deliver uh, in this uh, final game. Four was completed, 18 for two. Um, so it's 18 for two Australia after four overs. Coating Coleman getting two wickets in that yes. over without conceding a run. So made two wickets for her. Belly on 13. She has been hitting the ball well. Come on then, Joe. Here comes the skipper, Josie Grooves. Here we go, Josie G. And uh, had uh, the uh, couple of days off, Sunday and Monday. Have, uh, has been uh, touring uh, nearby places uh, here in Hambantota, gone uh, to the Udavalave National Park. And she says she enjoyed uh, sighting some elephants because they don't have elephants in England. That's what she said at the toss. And uh, she was thrilled about it uh, as well. It's good to see these uh, girls getting the opportunity to explore Sri Lanka, tourist destination, of course. And lots to see in this uh, small, beautiful country. Most beautiful beaches, lots of wildlife. You name it, you get it uh, in uh, Sri Lanka and uh, within a s short space of time, a couple of hours, you know, it's a total different uh, scenery out here. And it's uh, great to see both Australia and England, uh, the players, uh, the teams, uh, even the parents, whoever has come over, they're enjoying themselves uh, uh, when they have a break from uh, cricket as well. And uh, that's the uh, Sheffield United. Yeah, Joe, Supporters are out there with their flags, of course, Joe. supporting uh, the England girls. It's Jesse Groves, three deliveries, well, giving away three two girls, runs. Three now, girls. Maintaining a good line, good length. She's had a fairly decent series. She was brilliant with the bat uh, the other day against Australia. Made a fantastic 57 to get them to 146, which was a match-winning score. It's been good with the ball, uh, Josie Groves. Ball two overs for just six runs against Australia as well. If I remember right, picked up wickets in the Sri Lankan game. So she's had a, a very good uh, uh, tournament uh, so far, playing a third match here, leading England with a lot of pride. And uh, 
certainly uh, enjoying herself uh, on and off the field. It's down the leg side, worked away nicely, but there is a fine leg, short fine leg there. That's the end of that over, 22 Australia after five overs. There you see the batting card of the Australians up to now. That's quoting Coleman to continue. Two wickets, so no runs in our first over. Very good over, got both the wickets. That's put away nicely by Emmy Smith. Gets, collects two runs there, takes on to three, and the Australians go to 22. As we say, good afternoon to Damika Himanto, who has joined us in the box. Good afternoon, Damika. Very good afternoon, Polinas. Fifth game is upon us, Australia. After winning the first game of the series, that was a close one. I struck outside the old stump, it seems. Especially considering the truckload of mistakes they've done yesterday. I'm sure Australia is hoping for improved performance with four changes right throughout the series. They've been adopting these rotation policy each game with four changes which is good to see giving out chances testing out each and every one i think that's the way to go forward meanwhile tilly caught in coleman outstanding figures two for two in our second over yes coleman has been really bowling tight for the australian batsman struggling in the first two over got the two wickets to fall this morning this afternoon 23 on the board for two wickets. Coleman's bowling figure is two for three. She's bowling a second over. Pally on 14 of uh, 17 deliveries. This time nicely bowled and Pally pushing it on the offside. Lucky discuss pre-match. Three teams, all three teams still in with a chance of finishing up at the top. Australia having won the first game in with the chance of winning this one and making this time goes aerial and uh, reaching the field of the first bounce caught in Coleman was excited for a moment after six uh, Australia 24 for two Quality from us here, girls. You see the umpire Chandrika Amrasinghe signaling the end of power play. Our first power play. The Australians have good 24 runs. They lost two wickets. So it's Josie Groves to continue. The English captain. The Australian among the Australian batters, uh, Pele has been uh, really good. She got 15 of 19 deliveries. That's a uh, good delivery. Worked away nicely towards short third man to get a single. Kate Perry, more like an anchor for Australia. Yesterday, she done that job quite clearly. Stayed there for a while, spending time in the middle, steadying things down for Australia after losing early wickets. And today, they've already lost two wickets, so she's sticking to her stars. Another one outside the off -stop. A signal wide by umpire Amra Singha. Going further away with that leg spin. You see, which fully up but still yeah, Josie, yeah, without Josie. the reach of the batsman. The Australians, after winning the toss, uh, Miss Smith said uh, they are looking for a total of around 130 plus, but they have lost two wickets, two wickets quite early. Two for 26 at the moment. Good jokes, good jokes. Groves and uh, Coleman keeping things tight. Stay there, stay there. Okay, stay 
Pelly got off to a good start, getting 16. She got a 16 of 20 deliveries. And we've spoken about new skipper for Australia today, Amy Smith. Australia not only testing out their batting and bowling skills, they're also testing out the captaincy, the leadership skills, which is always good to see. Smith, as we speak, picking up two good runs through Medicut region. Short pitch from Josie Groves. Yeah, the Australians are playing without their regular skipper, Lucy Hamilton. She definitely had a very good series. Got a half century yesterday to steer the Australians to victory over the Sri Lankans. That's full toss, pushed away, but uh, straight to the fielder. But anyway, bit of misfeeling there. They managed to cross off for a single, taking the Australian total on to 29. 29 for two of 6.25 overs. We are quite possibly looking at the stars of the future in women's cricket. Josie Grove is one of them. Caught and ball chance and really neatly taken. Grooves picking up a wicket. Yes, Grooves watched that ball very carefully into her hands. That was a good catch taken by her. And Australia losing their third wicket. That's Pelly walking back for 16. She very nicely taken. She watched that ball into her hands very well. Kate Pelly realizing she's played a bad shot, trying to drive it straight, but straight it was uppishly, straight into the hands of the bowler. Chelsea Gross, the England captain, accepted it. Lucy Finn, right-handed batter, in at five, Australia, in a spot of bother. They had the same problem, if you remember, previous game, and taken a while to get out of the shell. But today, 29 runs, that's her record, Amy Smith, 11.5, not the most impressive average, best of six seen. So, this time, down the leg side, quite possibly, yes, it is. Five extras, just the kind of stuff Australia needing at the moment. So wide signal by umpire Nila and De Silva. That's going down the leg side. Yes, so more runs to the Australian total. Takes the Australian total on to 34. Hey, well, they started off really nicely against Sri Lanka by picking up a wicket of first delivery. This time, looking to pitch it in line with the stump, only managing to pitch it outside the leg stump, and as a result, provided five extras. Australia is happy, so is their supporters. Amy Smith looking busy with that one for another single. Yes, Sivali had uh, 4 for 19 against Sri Lanka. Very good bowling figures, but today started off with a wide, which conceded four runs. But definitely has come back in with a dot delivery and a single in the next. Well, England definitely might be wanting her to strike on a good line, good length, and to trouble the Australian batsman. It's Lucy Finn. Pushing it back to the bowler. No run. You see some of the spectators here, the parents or players watching here at the Mahindraj Parks International Stadium here in Surya Vabahamban Thutta. This time tossed up again and firmly played by Finn down towards the mid on area. Gets a single. And today, two batters in the middle, Smith and Finn, added responsibilities because they know for a fact. 
Lucy Hamilton not available so these two with added responsibilities looking to build up a partnership nicely whipped that one up towards Squalic region and picking up another single this is the way to go for Smith and Finn singles each and every time and once you starting to do that that will frustrate the bowlers and trying out different lengths ultimately providing loose deliveries this time worked the way towards short fine leg region and picking up another single to complete the eight Australia 38 for three Yeah, you see that uh, the buildings, Australians had a good building in the second over. After that, they lost a couple of wickets and now recovered a bit on the eighth over. Getting nine runs in the eighth over. And Lucy Finn so very in has been brought into ball. Here we go, Dove, here we go, go. Lucy Finn batting for the first time in the series. The first game, she has got the opportunity to bat. Lucy Finn might be wanting to make it big today. Second point. That's Devina Perrin. Two points now. Right arm leg break. That way. Davina Perrin. There's a big gap Your there, point Dab. batter. Very energetic in the field. Sure you want Anu Suera? We found spinners generally had good time in comparison to the faster bowlers yeah, this time Dabby. straight away getting past the outside edge close enough it's a good start for Perrin run there, rate 4.65 not ideal not desired run rate Australia would have hoped at this stage but the problem they have well fielded keeping it down for a single fin very into getting the opportunity to bowl for the first time in this series. Toxing that ball up to the two Australian batters that was firmly driven by Finn to get that single. Definitely the Australian batters uh, looking for a good score, but they're struggling up to now. 39 for three. That's a good bit of bowling by Perrin this time. Smith trying to cut it away, didn't get hold of it. Quite contrasting to her skipper, Josie Groves. Flatter, quicker. Adopting outside the off stump line. Not too much of turn this time. A little bit of flight and missed opportunity. Perrin, good to see. She's smiling still. Yes, definitely that's a missed opportunity, Perrin, pushing it through a bit faster. Wicket keeper ward uh, couldn't collect it. You see the replay of that, you see pushing it a bit faster. And Ward uh, was not uh, able to collect that delivery. And this time put away nicely towards the extra cover region. That's by Smith, he gets a single. Takes the Australian score on to 40. Good job, good job. So Smith in as a captain today getting a chance lucky break ideal opportunity to make it big this time goes aerial and oh luckily goes through the hands for another boundary for the first time we are starting to see fielding lapses are arriving from England fielders they've been very energetic but that was clear opportunity well definitely that was another chance that's a second chance drop today and this time it's uh, Courtney Coleman that's an easy catch again we saw Charlotte Lambert, uh, Charlotte Lambert dropping uh, opportunity in the first uh, over itself but uh, here Perrine the unfortunate bowler this time so that's the end of that over nine gone 44 for three Davina Perrin could have easily picked up two wickets in a first over of the series. Smashed away 
Builder comes around, keeping it down for just single and coming back for the second. Good running by Amy Smith. Getting busy, keeping herself rotating the strike, which is good to see in as a captain. Added responsibilities, time to shine. The feeling in this series from all three teams have been not up to the standard. But Sri Lanka, in the first game, they did feel well, but uh, the standards were dropping a bit. The Australians and the English have been uh, poor in the field. They need to improve in that area very much. Savannah so Lee just as flight and delivery that was driven firmly down towards mid on. They got a single there. 47 on the board, 47 for 3 Australia. After winning the toss and deciding to bat first, Smith was the acting captain today. She's on 13 and Finn is on 7. The way I look at it, Polly, there are some outstanding fielding efforts, of course, in between quite a few fielding lapses so we're starting to wonder if, are we looking at the same set of fielders so it's just about being consistently good in the field these young girls of course will learn from their mistakes but yes uh, but catches should be held some of these catches drop were easy catches simple catches which uh, should be taken at this level of cricket and that's firmly driven again this time by Finn Fielded by the mid on fielder. The batsman crossover for a single. Two batters out there in the middle, getting their run rate up above five now for the first time. Final ball in this over. Finn this time hits it high up in the air. The reads a fielder getting under it. No, she couldn't get up to it. Although that was a good effort. She was right at the edge of the boundary, ran just about 20 yards, Soren Kumar. She's too, one of the most energetic fielders in the England outfit. So 10 overs gone, it's uh, 53 for 3. Going through the scorecard, Kate Pelly looking good for a while. 16 of 21 deliveries. Mackeon went early for three and Dalvin for naught. Amy Smith and Lucy Finn could be their lucky day. Both got the breaks. Eight extras, 53 for three. Australia will take it. Now the crucial period, 10 to 20. It's about acceleration as I welcome Ricky once again. Yes, uh, three wickets have uh, sort of uh, kept them on the uh, back foot. Coleman has been outstanding. Those two wickets in the first over certainly put the uh, pressure on. Grooves with the leg spinners has been very economical, picking up a wicket as well. Levi has gone for 18. Perrin one over for six. And uh, Lambert was expensive uh, once again. The couple of games that she played Lambert uh, so far in this tournament, she has been expensive, a bit wavered. But uh, probably they will need a back uh, towards uh, the uh, death overs. Two tall buildings uh, out there, a couple of them that uh, two wickets and a maiden by Coleman really pushed uh, Australia back. Uh, looking now to uh, consolidate, like you mentioned, 10 overs remaining. They will be looking to get to 125, 130 minimum uh, from you onwards. So that's what they really want. As uh, the. Uh, crowd enjoy the cool beverages in these hot and humid uh, conditions relaxing on those uh, green uh, grass banks out there and uh, part of uh, the Sri Lankan uh, crowd as well watching the game the Australian supporters and uh, Viraj as always doing a fantastic job with the cameras official uh, photographer for Sri Lanka cricket and uh, brings all his equipment uh, with him uh, in his uh, vehicle uh, the other day. He said, I have even my stool, my table, the umbrellas, you name it. 
and he has it well prepared always for any game that's a short and wide coming back for the second could be close but the throw was a bit wide not strong enough needed uh, a stronger return from uh, Suren Kumar over the bales but a couple of runs um, and to Smith now she's the skipper today uh, Damika she didn't uh, get going in the first two games she played but probably that captaincy you know that uh, sort of weight on her shoulders is uh, giving her that uh, extra momentum and that's six isn't it has it cleared the ropes she's taken on the bowler flighter delivery went straight over the bowler's head Amy Smith got her break now starting to cut loose beautifully played Berin must be considering herself unlucky should have picked up two wickets including Amy's wicket but now Amy having got the chance now accelerating it's time to get a move on Australia new skipper of the day on 22 At the moment, boundaries are vital. These two have been picking up singles at will. Always good to see. This time that uh, slightly shorter, quickish delivery, mixing up the length. But this is a good little innings uh, from uh, Smith, 23 of 24, going at almost a runner ball. Finn has uh, done the supporting act really well, 12 of 9. So a good partnership here. Building up uh, for Australia. This young lady Lucy Finn looks like a very strong striker. We've seen a couple of times. Very keen on going over the top. Almost provided an opportunity, yeah, not taken. Good comeback delivery by Davina Perrin. The first over was a very good one. The second over, that six ruined the figures. But still, decent enough. It's about England showing off good energy. Oh. Nicely oh. tapped that one away. Going all the way. That's pure timing, pure class from Pin. That's a beautifully played. The width outside the off stump, a quicker one from Perrin. And uh, all she needed was uh, to get uh, bad on it. Get it wide off that uh, short third man fielder. Um, That's uh, legs, go square, very please. well played, neatly played. A very expensive over. 13 runs off that over. So not a good one for Perrin or for England. Damika, have you tried uh, getting into any of those waters? Uh, you have been here for around a week now. Not at all. Not at all. I thought you only feared the elephants. Crocodile included. <laughs> well, there you go. Damika prefers uh, the indoors. He doesn't like uh, walking about much uh, on those uh, roads or, or going through those uh, trees. Hard to get him out. So Coleman back into the attack. Two for four. Outstanding. Ten dot balls. But that's crucial. Good passage of play for Australia though. They'll be looking to up the tempo. To double now the score from where they are. If they could get to 135, 140, they'll be really happy. But they need wickets in hand. Beautiful, isn't it though, Damika? Looks inviting, no doubt. Certainly looks very, very inviting during these hot and humid days. Those waters, tempting. Sri Lanka, as I mentioned, beautiful country. You know, so much uh, of uh, natural resources. So much uh, to see if you're a traveler. 38 of the last 27 deliveries. Uh, this partnership, in fact, 38 of uh, 27, so it's a uh, great going. 
They've been picking up fair share of boundaries amongst the singles and twos. Just the way to go. They must have realized in this ground, this track, you got to keep moving. Top edge, but safe. Lands safely. Nobody out there. They'll get a couple of runs. Very lucky for Finn. The intention was clear. She was looking to sweep it much squarer. But unfortunately for the Australian bowler, or, or the England bowler, beg your pardon, it uh, went uh, safely. Now this is what she was looking for earlier as well. This is good cricket. Really good cricket from Finn. She missed out on the earlier one, but this time execution was uh, perfect. Right on top of that one, swept it fine, away from the fielder who was on the boundary. And uh, another very good over, seven runs uh, for Australia, 12 overs uh, completed. As she comes in, I straight away realize she's a stroke maker. Looking at her flow of the bat, really nice. Like the ball comes on, on then, to the bat. For the first time, run rate is above six. Australia doing everything right at the moment. Yes, and Finn is uh, looking very good. She's looking very comfortable out there. That's a leading edge. Falls short. Good start there, Jules. Come on then, Jules. Josie Groves starting off her third. Looking to put some breaks on Australian scoring. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know. This time straight to the field and a misfield. After a while, Surayan Kumar was too keen. Looked up, touch early. These things can happen. When you are trying to prevent the single, you're charging in. And all of a sudden, you get your head up and balls sneak through the legs. This is lovely. Dancing down the track, lifted over extra cover for four. Some serious momentum being added to Australian. Putting on her dancing shoes, uh, Smith, going down the track. Lofting it over the inner field, not afraid uh, to take the aerial route. This has been a good little innings uh, from her. As she mentioned at the toss, she said she's very proud and happy to captain Australia. And I think uh, she's uh, thriving in this uh, leadership role now. Taking on the responsibility, not afraid to play her shots. Playing much more freely. And uh, it's uh, coming off at the moment. Move to 30 of 29. So true, Ricky. Representing your country in any sport on, and captaining, girls. huge honor. It's coming, girls. Smith taking up the responsibility really nicely. And uh, and the words she said, it, it doesn't come every day. You know, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity probably to captain Australia under 19 team. So it's a great honor uh, for her. Going, and girls. it's great Keep to going, see girls. the Australia credit to the coaches, the management, you know, rotating the players, giving every opportunity to everyone. And uh, this is what it all means at uh, this level, at under-19 level. It's a learning curve. They will get better and uh, each day grows. And of course, we'll see a lot more of these players in the future. Fantastic. Now, this is top quality batting. Gave room very early, even though the bowler had so much of time uh, to uh, watch what the uh, batter was doing. Still, it was a shot. It was wide and uh, she played it perfectly into the gap now that's another very good over for australia they are really putting on the momentum unique landscape flat plenty of greenery above surya ever fantastic looking ground Outstanding game of cricket in the middle. 
Yes, if you're watching from overseas, from Australia, from England, this is the aerial view of the Mahindra Rajapaksa International Stadium here in uh, Surya Vava, which has hosted uh, so much of cricket built during the 2011 uh, World Cup. And uh, it has seen a lot of uh, international cricket here, especially day night cricket, T20s. One day internationals hosted the 2011 World Cup games, uh, also the 2012 T20 World Cup games as well. We have seen some fantastic uh, matches on this venue. I think we have another bowling change and a run out opportunity. Throw wasn't reaching the field, reaching the bowler rather. It's about being vigilant, being nimble footed. These young girls, of course, very fast, very agile. For the first time in this game, I feel Australia got their noses in front. Uh, Grucock has had a very good tournament as well. You know, she's bowled well uh, for England in a couple of games that she's played. She's been very economical. She's been one of their sort of leaders in this uh, setup. Playing across the line. She's looked really good, Smith, when she's playing straight. You saw that earlier one over mid off. As soon as she goes uh, across the line, it looks a bit ugly. But when she plays straight, it uh, looks uh, so much more prettier to watch. You said that right, Ricky. Playing straight through the line. And uh, in particular, cut shots and pull shots. I have no doubt, most preferred go-to shots for Smith. In the meantime, Finn, who someone like to play down the ground. Grave Cook, who built up that partnership, match winning partnership for England against Australia in the first game. She's back, so added strength in England batting. Australia steadily getting a move on, exactly what the supporters is looking for. Good over though, still the two runs. But that's a good shot down the ground, and that's four. She spoils the over for Grew Cook. Finn taking it on the full and once again like I mentioned playing straight is always effective and uh, much more nicer to watch straight down the ground no chance for the bowler no chance for the two fielders converging uh, from a long on and long off straight as a dice quick outfield 60 meter boundary and that was uh, no stop in that one four runs Flex. outstanding partnership in progress as we look having a look at the surroundings Flex. A drone operator having a fantastic time exploring the beauty of Surya Vava. That's good. Let me be a bit that way, yes. That's good, Lambo. You're not fine now. A lot of infrastructure as well uh, has come up in this part of uh, the country over the years. We have, of course, uh, the port, the airport as well. Partnership of 62 unbroken of just 42 deliveries. 34 of 32, 29 of 21 to Smith and Finn. And uh, they are looking really dangerous. Uh, this partnership uh, looks ominous for England. So what they have done is they are bought in probably their spearhead. They are go-to bowler. Stonehouse back into the attack. They need to get a wicket here quickly. Because uh, the game is uh, running away. And uh, Australia will be looking for a big score. So they need a wicket. They need a partnership breaker. She's a very smart bowler. Alexa Stonehouse. She done really well in this series. So skipper Good. must be thinking it's time for them to make a breakthrough. This partnership growing on to dangerous proportions. Yes, uh, Captain Hamilton has been very good with the bat. You saw her take a team to victory uh, yesterday as well. But other than that, I think this partnership has been the best we have seen of Australian batting in this tournament so far. In the four games they are played, they are playing their final game in this two twenty two T Twenty tournament. And when you take it as a partnership, two players batting together, you know, they are looked really good. Uh, and uh, I think they will be really happy uh, to see the progress from game one uh, to uh, game four, how it has uh, come off. Amy Smith, 1-6 uh, uh, down the ground. Couple of boundaries as well. But uh, she's rotated the strike, played both sides of the wicket. 
Oh, lovely. Some improvisation working towards off stump and got the placement. This is outstanding. Betting Smith. Yes, sir. She's toying with the ball in now. That's what confidence does. Keep going, girls. Keep going. Earlier, she gave room against the leg spinner and uh, slapped it through the offside. Now walking across the stumps, exposing all three stumps to Stonehouse. Come on, Come but on, confident Alex. enough to get bet on it and uh, get it into the area she was uh, looking for another boundary to the australian total emmy smith wasn't scoring that yeah. many runs prior to this game this was yeah, just managing to get above the inner circle picking up another single yes sir, probably uh, didn't time that that's all she wanted trying to hit it Come probably on, too hard got the uh, going, no sort goes. of uh, the bottom part of the bat i know she's uh, disappointed that she didn't get that way to the boundary as well so added responsibilities bring the best out of Amy Smith good running between the wickets quickly responding picks up a single completes 15th Australia 99 for 3 Lucy Finn, 31 of uh, 23, she struck four boundaries. A couple of them coming down the ground. Looks a very powerful player. She loves the sweep and she's picked up four more. Poor delivery by Grew Cox, strain on the leg stump. And uh, Finn is very strong in that area. 100 on the board with that boundary, 103 for 3. And we are still in the first ball of uh, the 16th over. Dangerous signs uh, for England. Because these two Australian batters have really uh, enjoyed themselves out there. They have grown in confidence as uh, the game has uh, progressed. And looking uh, very comfortable as well. Yes, definitely. Lucy Finn batting for the first time in this series has impressed a lot. 35 of 25 deliveries that hit officially, but uh, safe. Getting a single there. Smith too playing an important role, leading the Australians. These two batters have put on a very good partnership. That's a very unfortunate. They brought up a valid point. They are play batting for the first time in this uh, series. Well, uh, we're unfortunate that we haven't seen more of her with the bat. Oh. But then uh, again, like I mentioned over and over, this is all about the opportunities. Everybody getting a chance. So Smith, uh, Finn played, but unfortunately didn't get to bat in the game. She did play. But uh, she's making amends for that in this game and showing what she's capable of. Oh, that's down the ground. What's happened there? Is that six? Yet it's, it is. It's got the legs to travel over the boundary and by a long way stand and deliver Amy Smith. Flight her delivery. She didn't need to go down the track. She knew she had the, the power backed herself to go over long on. Super hit. Amy Smith too, uh, Ricky. Getting the opportunity to lead the Australians. The first time she's playing in wonderful innings. She's the most experienced player on this side. Batting uh, superbly here on 46. Yes, uh, she played a couple of uh, poor shots in the first two games that she played against Sri Lanka and England. Cut out in a similar fashion. Going for the pull was caught at mid on. But I think she's learned from the mistakes. She was uh, didn't play yesterday's game, got a rest, probably watched how she batted. You know, and this is all about adjusting quickly, you know, working on your game day by day. On, and uh, Amy come on, Smith has uh, really come uh, good so far. Two sixers in this innings. And uh, both in the, that same area. Over long, on over the bowler's head. 11 fours. So it has been uh, a very productive uh, wagon wheel He's for Australia so far in the first 16 the overs. It's a wonderful partnership between these two batters. They have put on 90 runs for the fourth, fourth wicket. 
Third wicket fell at 20, and there you see Finn again, a strong build. Hit widely over, that's well taken in the boundary. Very good catch there by Charlotte Lambert, right on the mid wicket boundary. So they will just uh, check that the third umpire as well, close to the boundary line. So given out, clean catch. That was a very good catch. I mean, that's uh, one of uh, the better catches we have seen in the tournament uh, so far. Anything near the boundary in the outfield is never easy. You have to keep your eyes on the ball. You have to keep well, your it. eyes it's on the ropes as well. And Charlotte Lambert has uh, pulled off a very good catch at a very important moment. Because uh, Finn was looking so dangerous. They badly needed that wicket. And uh, they say catchers win new matches. So that was uh, certainly a very good catch. Uh, uh, by Lambert to get that uh, breakthrough. Yeah, Elena La Rosa, she's had a very good tournament, tournament so far. Outstanding with the ball, very good with the bat. And uh, now she's uh, come in here in this last four overs. Yeah, as you see, a high score of 44 that was in that game uh, versus uh, yeah, yeah, Sri Lanka. And uh, she has the freedom now to express herself, go for her shots. You know, they have six wickets in hand and uh, try to get as much as possible for Australia. Yes, that's exactly what Elena Larosa might be wanting to do. As much as possible, the opportunity given to her at this stage is to go get onto a free hand and get on with the game. That was a good catch taken in the boundary by Charlotte Lambert to get rid of uh, Lucy Finn, who was looking very dangerous. There, I see the replay of that. He did firmly over mid wicket but uh, very nicely held and now with the left hander in it's going to make life difficult for the England bowlers now they have to keep changing the field and uh, Coleman has to keep changing her lines as well so they have to uh, ensure everything is in position that was that catch again Let's look at her eyes on the ball and uh, just uh, uh, probably a few centimeters or so inches in from the ropes well most held that's the most important thing ricky oh, keeping your eyes on the ball and keeping it like, into your hand getting it into your hands and that's exactly what charlotte lambert did there that's another good attempt they'll get a couple of runs falling short of the field uh, smith living dangerously but Coleman has been the bowler that has troubled the Australians. Two wickets in her first over. She's now picked up a third, almost got a fourth. That was a big top edge. Came in from the boundary very, very quickly. Well, the Australians looking to go away with this game. Going for the runs. They have six wickets in hand, about three overs remaining after this. And May Smith on 48. Might be wanting to get a half century. Had two poor, poor games earlier. That's put away again this time to the mid wicket boundary. Gets a single. Takes her on to 49 and keep the strike. So 17 overs gone. It's 114 for four. He says, So there you go, some steady buildings uh, building up uh, in the last uh, 10 overs or so. 
Good going for Australia. Amy Smith. Is that a hundred? No. She'll have to wait. Uh, if was that a fifty, beg your pardon. She'll have to wait. Forty-three balls, three fours, two sixes, uh, a decent strike rate, uh, we could call it certainly. 113. Comes down the track, and that's it. Didn't middle that one, inside edge, but that's just enough to get that single. She's disappointed that she didn't uh, hit that uh, probably much better, but uh, a fantastic in it. Leading from the front, captain in Australia today, 50 of just 44 deliveries. You no, know, she's uh, shown a lot of grit, a lot of fight. And in these hot and humid conditions, it's never easy to play these long innings. But, yeah, see uh, the run map of Emmy uh, Smith. Runs all around the wicket, especially on the offside. Very strong. 16 coming off that. 44 balls, 50 runs. Very good innings. And she must be pretty happy, Ricky, after the first two games' performance by her. Happy and looks tired as well because in these conditions, but in... Uh, for what, 17.2, uh, uh, I mean 44 delivery, she came in at number 4 today. Uh, came down the order generally, uh, she bats uh, open the innings. But uh, that's quite a long time and a bit of a misfield. Allows uh, the batters uh, to come back for 2. Is it or just one run? Okay, so they didn't get the first one, they just ran on that overthrow, unfortunately. So La Rosa gets a single. That single takes us going to 116. We are in the 18th over. Well, these two Australian batters will really have a go at it now. That's out. Couldn't time it. She was tiring, so she was going for everything. She was just looking for runs. That's all Smith was uh, wanted to do, get as much as possible for her team. Holds out uh, towards the long off grooves. Picks up the wicket. Her second wicket. But uh, ends uh, a fantastic innings. Uh, she'll be really happy after missing out on the first two games. Didn't play yesterday, the fourth game in this uh, T20 tournament. She's uh, got a half century. She's one of those experienced players in this lineup, senior players. You and see uh, that, uh, Ricky? She didn't put that much of power into it. Just timed it. And may be tired, yes. Uh, that's a very good innings. 45 deliveries, 50 runs. Caught by Lambert of Groves for 50. Emma Smith leading the Australians uh, today and led them from the front, no doubt about that. Taking the Australians go up to 116 for five. Ella Brisco is uh, coming to bat. She too has had an up and down tournament, hasn't been able to express herself. Neither with ball or, or, or bat. Yesterday was expensive with, with ball. You could see a high score of uh, 14. Yeah, Wasn't uh, she the one who was at, right there at the end yesterday uh, along with Skipper Hamilton? But uh, there were a couple of drop, uh, drop chances by the Sri Lankan. She was lucky. But now she has the freedom here. She has, uh, what, uh, about 13 deliveries left in this innings? Yes, yeah, she timed it well, but a little bit of lack of power. I thought uh, that uh, Smith shot, and this time uh, La Rosa turns it around and gets a single. That's the end of that over, 117 for five after 18 overs. That was the last wicket to fall once again, Smith. Chipping one uh, towards uh, long off, didn't get the power behind it, as the has mentioned, but that she was tiring. You saw last few shots were miss hits. Even when she went, got to a half century. But that was a very good innings. That's what you needed. She set the platform now. 12 deliveries to go. And uh, Australia will be looking to get at least another, what, 15 to 20 runs. I'm, I'm saying they have to try to get to 20 runs more. Get to 137. Because uh, you could throw your bats around. Nothing to lose. All to gain. And with La Rosa out there, they certainly have the power. Time turned away by Brisco this time towards the mid-wicket boundary. Well fielded there. Gets two runs. Takes the Australians go on to 119. 
Lambert has been uh, doing a lot of work on the boundary lines. She's held on to two catchers. One was a super one to get rid of Finn. And now does well to stop a certain boundary. So she's kept be busy on the boundary. The ball has been uh, following around. Well, the Australians, if they get run a ball even, they can get up to 130. So they must be wanting to get uh, definitely more than that. Certainly, I mean, the, when you have five wickets in hand, last two overs of a T20 game, you're looking to get at least uh, 10 runs per over. Short and pulled away this time. There is a fielder there right down on the boundary. Just a single, La Rosa takes her on to three. So Lee has been slightly expensive. She's gone for 22 so far in the 2.3 overs. Got a hand to it. That was powerfully struck by Brisco. As long as they get singles, England won't mind it. It's the boundaries they're looking to stop. Yes, the Australian batters will be looking for boundaries. They got to push the score up to 140 if possible. But just eight deliveries remaining. 122 for five. <laughs> That's down the left side. They could brilliant, be. brilliant work, Paulinas. Superb glove work behind the stumps. It's a wall, I guess, is the wicket keeper. Because that was not an easy stumping because the ball came between the stumps and the batter. She was going down the track, the left-handed La Rosa. Lee sort of uh, followed her. We'll take a look at that one. They are happy. Yes, definitely that was a good bit of glove work by Ward, the wicket keeper. They see the replay of that. A bit of work there by Ward. So that's the end of the innings of uh, La Rosa walking back. So brilliant glove work, no doubt about it. Given out straight away by the square leg umpire. Maggie Clark, uh, that looks out as well. That's plum in front. Umpire Amar Singer has uh, no doubt about it. Now this is uh, a few good deliveries by Lee because when you take a wicket, it's also a dot ball. So now she's got, uh, there was a uh, stumping and the LBW, two wickets in two deliveries means the uh, two dot balls, which Australia haven't been able uh, to uh, score off. Walking across her stumps, yes, that would have uh, gone on to hit midland leg. She was deep in a crease. So it's uh, seven down now, 122 for seven as Maggie Clark departs. So it's uh, Chicken Williamson coming in at nine. Well, Australians lost the opportunity to get up to 140. Lost two, two wickets in the previous over. 122 for seven. Well, we're in the final over with Briscoe on five. And Williamson still to open her account. Rivcock is the bowler. She's bowled two overs for 16 runs. Well, so now Briscoe has to take the advantage, uh, Paulinus. Five deliveries left. There you go. She has to play those big hits. Hasn't been able to time it. So these are golden dot balls uh, for England. You know, they have had four on the trot. Two wickets in that uh, last over. That was that LBW again. And now two dot balls uh, to uh, start uh, this uh, 20th over. And that's another wicket. Bold him, a boulder is it? 
So that's another good delivery by Greg Cock. Bowl, uh, Briscoe being bowled by her for five. And Australia losing another wicket at 122. The Australians are losing their way at the moment. 122 for eight. So there you go, we'll take a look at that one. That was that last I'll over, last wicket. Out. That was the LBW. So Ella Briscoe departs, bowled by Grucock for five, 122 fight. Yeah. Sienna Eve, she's been brilliant with the ball. She'll have a lot of work to do when she comes out later on to bowl. But now she has to do a bit of batting. And what a over this has been by Stonehouse. Oh, sorry, uh, Grucock, absolutely brilliant. Four dot balls. She's picked up a wicket, but it's the dot balls. You can't ask for more in the final over of a T20 innings. Where things are going, the Australians might not reach 130 even, Ricky. We were talking about 122 with 10 balls to go. But still, they've done pretty well, the English bowlers. They'll get uh, two runs there. Yes, sir. certainly Australia lost the momentum. I mean, coming into that uh, last over, they had the momentum with them to really push for maybe 135 at least, uh, certainly. But then those two wickets in the last two deliveries of the last over. And now... Three dot balls and a wicket in this over certainly pushed them back. So credit to the England bowlers. I mean, the, they have really fought hard. That's from right straight to the field. There could be another run out. We'll have to wait and see for the umpire's decision. Umpire's asking for a refer to the third umpire. So Eve has been run out by a long way. Excellent bowling by Gru Kok. Just the two runs in this over. Picked up a wicket as well. But then you have, what, five dot balls. Brilliant. And Australia in their innings at 124 for nine. At one stage they looked like to get to 135 minimum easily. But the last two overs have been absolutely fantastic for the England uh, team. They will feel happy going into uh, the dressing room uh, or to the dugout because they sort of have the momentum in those last couple of overs in that partnership when Smith and Finn were going they were looking to take the game away from England but they crawled their way back picking up Smith then Finn and uh, after that wicket started uh, to uh, tumble towards the latter part and Australia could not uh, uh, go on continue with the momentum that they had they fell away and have been restricted to 124 for 9 well, I think the changing point was uh, the catch taken by Charlotte uh, Lambert in the boundary to dismiss Finn. That was a wonderful catch and from there onwards the English bowlers kept on pegging and getting the wickets at regular interval and Australia were restricted for 124 for 9. Yes, uh, Pelly, 16 of a 21. McKeon and Dolvin could not get going today but a superb half century by the skipper today. Amy Smith, 50 of 45. I thought Finn batted brilliantly, 36 of 27. Uh, the latter low order could not uh, get um, among uh, the runs. Nine extras in that uh, 20 overs. And 124 for nine is what uh, Australia got. I thought uh, that England, uh, they had some blemishes in the field in the early part of the innings. But uh, they were brilliant towards the latter part. The final five, six overs, they were absolutely fantastic. You know, not forgetting only the catches, but a couple of stumps as well uh, toward. She was really good. I thought the stumping of La Rosa was fantastic. Glove work, very quick. And uh, the field it has helped England to restrict Australia to 124 for 9 in their allotted 20 overs. Talking about Charlotte Lambert taking the most valuable two catches there. You see the bowling card for the English. Four, 3 for 15 by Coleman. 
Coating coal monthly for 15 or 4 hours, 2 for 22 by Captain Joseph Groves, 2 for 23 again by Awana Lee. They were the main wicket takers by Greg Quad had 1 for uh, 18 of 3 overs. And a good bit of bowling coming out from uh, Stonehouse, uh, 3 overs, 15 runs, an economy rate of 5 per over. Follow wickets, 18, 18, 29, and then a big partnership. Up to 110, that's the fourth wicket between Lucy Finn and uh, Amy Smith. And then from there onwards, it was wickets falling at regular, regular intervals. 116, 122, 122, 122, and 124. Nine extras, 20 overs, 124 for nine. Yes, it was an 81-run partnership for the fourth wicket between Finn and uh, Smith. That set the tone uh, for Australia. Fantastic batting. And England need... 125 to win in 20 overs at 6.20 with 10 wickets in hand when they come out to bat in a short run. It's going to be a very interesting run chase. Will it be Australia? Will it be England? And uh, we'll have to wait and see. This is what happened so far. This is what uh, happened earlier in the innings uh, or in this innings. They lost McEwen early. Then that stumping of Dulwin, a rush of blood. Smith then came in as well, but they lost to Pelly after a fantastic inning. She was batting so well. But Smith and Finn started slowly. They had their bit of luck as well. Had a few problems, but uh, the power of Smith down the ground. Finn preferred the sweep shot. She got a lot of runs in that region. And uh, they played both sides of the wicket. Played the field really well. Now that was Smith giving herself room, playing the field. And uh, the power of Finn, as I mentioned. She was uh, looking Definitely. good uh, down the ground. Definitely they put on a good partnership of 89 runs. As we were telling earlier, Ricky. This uh, really took the Australians back into the game. And then that brilliant catch by Charlotte Lambert in the boundary. Two catches for Lambert. She didn't bowl well. One over for 11. But uh, she certainly caught up in the field. And uh, that stamping of ward. That was uh, fantastic work. Cannot deny that. And... Uh, there was uh, those two wickets in uh, two balls that uh, set the tone and the run out of the last ball as well. So we'll be back in a few minutes uh, for the England run chase.
Welcome back to the Mahindra Rajapaksa International Cricket Stadium here in Surya Vaba Hambantota, Australia winning the toss and deciding to bat first in this game against the English under-19 team, women's under-19 team. They need 125 runs to win this game. Australia batted first. They were 124 for eight in their 20 overs. And uh, now we have to, about to begin the run chase. Devin Aparin uh, opening the innings for the English. Definitely they might be wanting to get on with this game. Erin Thomas, the other opener. 125 to win this game for England. Yes, Erin Thomas played three games, 27 runs, 21 being the highest. So they didn't get going in that last game versus Australia. Perrin just made 10, Thomas made uh, 6. So they'll be looking for a better uh, partnership, Dav Davina Perrin. She's got the starts, but unable uh, to convert those starts into big scores. At the other end, uh, Briscoe too hasn't had the uh, best outings with the ball. I think she just bowled one over spells in the two games she's played yesterday, so far yesterday as well, just one over. So she uh, needs to start off well. Both teams need that early momentum into this innings, whether it's batting or bowling. Yes, definitely the English openers might be wanting to have a good start. Chasing a target of 125 to win this game. Australia batted pretty well with a good partnership between Lucy Finn and uh, Emma Smith. 89 run partnership for the fourth wicket. They could have definitely got something uh, better than this, Ricky, when the last uh, couple of wickets fell at regular intervals. Yeah, that one cut away nicely. That's going towards the boundary. Four runs. That's burying off the mark with the boundary. Beautiful hands with outside the off stump. And uh, Perrin up to the task, just a squeeze in away, squeeze in that away through the offside. There were two fielders, got it right between them. A good looking square drive by Perrin to kick off uh, this uh, innings of hers in this game. Well, opportunity for Briscoe to come good with the ball this time. Let's turn the leg side, put away towards the fine leg. The Australians have opened with her. The England batters really need to get on to a good start. 125 to win this game. It's a change in the field. We have a mid on a mid wicket. So one going deep onto the boundary at a square leg. There's a deep fine leg, a deep square leg, the two fielders on the boundary, mid on and mid wicket. There's a short third, backward point, extra cover, mid off on the offside. Nobody deep on the offside. So she has to target the stumps, cannot to afford to give her the balance any width outside that off stump. It's worked away nicely towards the fine leg. There is a fielder there. Get a single. Perrin is on five. Thomas on one. Chasing a target of 125 to win this game. You see the England dugout eagerly waiting. Nicely played on the outside this time. Getting into the gap. Very nicely played. That's Be gone towards the boundary for four. Beautiful. Really beautiful hands from a pairing. Can't get any better. Beautiful to the eye. I mean, when you play through the offside and you split a strong offside field, 
that's wonderful to watch look at them the two fielders just looking at each other as the ball went right between them superb placement she's got off to a very good start in the very first over two glorious boundaries first over completed 11 without loss That's it. That's it. So we have Eve. Now she's been the game changer for Australia with the ball. Sienna Eve. Four wickets uh, so far in the tournament. In the three games uh, she's... Uh, uh, two games that uh, she has played before this. She's been outstanding uh, or with the ball. Picked up a 3 for 10 in her last game versus England in 3.3 overs. Bowled a maiden as well. I remember in the first game against Sri Lanka, she bowled oh. superbly. But that's a boundary. Thomas picks up her first one. That could have been stopped, Ricky, by the bowler herself. And uh, went down to the boundary, straight, nicely straight driven. But definitely, Sienna had an opportunity of stopping it. There you see. A bit of misfielding there. Right through her legs, right through her legs. She'll be very disappointed. Can't blame anybody but herself. Certainly fielding of uh, the, their own bowling has been a bit of a problem to many of uh, these girls in this tournament. We saw yesterday a couple of dot, drop chances by the Sri Lankan bowlers as well. Today we saw that uh, straightforward drop chance right in the start of the game uh, wasn't it Charlotte who, who dropped a simple chance so this has been a, a bit of a problem yes definitely Charlotte Lambert uh, dropped an easy chance of her own bowling but then later on pulled off two brilliant catches on the boundary line breaking that partnership of 89 between uh, Lucy Finn and M.A. Smith Oh, look at that! Stand and deliver. Perrin just give her, gave herself that slight bit of room she was looking for and went straight as a dice over the bowler's head. That was uh, intentional. Look at that, the power behind it as well. Beautifully struck. Excellent batting. She's uh, looking... Ominous at the moment, she struck three brown rays and all three really good cricketing shots. Wait. Not now. Looks a really good uh, talent, uh, Perrin, at the top of the order. I mentioned she's got the starts, but uh, hasn't been able to convert. That's nicely played again down towards the mid on boundary. Gets a single. The England openers have got on to a good start. Two overs gone, 21 for no loss. So 5.78 is uh, the required uh, runs per over, 104 to win. Certainly now England on top, Australia need a couple of wickets to uh, sort of uh, get their way back into this game. <laughs> Try to uh, stop this uh, run flow as well. They're changing their bowlers around, Clark has been introduced into the attack. Starts off uh, with a uh, Yorker, uh, full and straight on the stumps. She uh, picked up uh, one for 19. Oh, uh, beg your pardon, just bowled two overs for 17. Hasn't picked up a wicket uh, in that game against uh, Sri Lanka, but overall, two wickets in the tournament so far. Okay. 
That's nicely played, but straight to the fielder. They win up here in. So Clark, oh, look at that. Enjoying, enjoying uh, the match, enjoying the weather. That is uh, wonderful to see. Yes, uh, Clark picked up uh, two for 18 of three overs. Maggie Clark in yesterday's win against uh, Sri Lanka. So she was good with the ball. She'll be looking to carry in that momentum to this game as well. Yes, she needs to bowl well and she needs to control this England batters. They were up to now, got on 22 runs of 2.3 overs. 103 runs more ne needed in 17.3 overs. That's down the leg side, could be called wide. Yes, it is. Umpire Chandrika Amrasinga signaling wide. Yes, a strain down the leg side. She's looking to bowl stump to stump. <coughs> Probably heading down the leg side uh, as well, says Umpire Amrasinga. But this is good bowling by Clark. She's bowling, looking to bowl full and straight. A few spectators uh, from down under and uh, from England enjoying the game. Too wide, too wide. She was bowling so well. She was targeting the stumps, Clark. But this time trying to do something different. It's uh, been a decent over so far. Just the three runs uh, she's given away. Which two of them have been wide? She got to bowl two more deliveries extra. Thank you, Clark. That's a good delivery again. She's looking to hit that Yorker length. She's not willing to give the batters to get under it. Bowling uh, with a plan. But that's beautifully played. Now that's so gorgeous uh, to watch. Thomas going through the offside. It was a good over until then. Spoils it for Clark. It was another foolish uh, delivery. But uh, this time it was the width just slightly outside the off stump. And wonderful hands uh, by Thomas. Look at that. No stop in that one. Four runs uh, to end the over. 28 without loss. So 28 on the boat for England. 97 more runs needed of 17 overs. Our leader, a new bowler. Gave away 10 runs in the previous over. Yes, uh, Australia depend a lot on Lee. Where is that? That's disappeared. We have lost it even in the cameras because it's out of here. It's over the boundary. I said earlier, she seems to have a lot of power, though she's a small in size pairing. Backing herself. Short delivery, asked to be hit, but still it needs to be put away. And uh, she was not afraid to hit it in there because she knew she could clear the ropes. That's a difficult shot to play. Flat batted over long on for six. So a very good shot, a lot of power in it, no doubt about that. But he not to the back foot. He did perfectly straight over mid on. England need 91 more of 16.3 overs. These two openers have given them a flying start. That coming down the wicket and driving it over mid on the mid off this time. Towards the boundary, four more runs.
This is wonderful batting. Wonderful batting. She dropped it short. She was hit. Flat batted for six. Went fuller. And Perrin, look at that. Giving herself that bit of room. Moving towards the leg side to get it through that offside field. Beautiful batting. This is excellent cricket. Wonderful to watch. Now, this is what it's all about. To see this uh, young talent of the under-19s of these three nations you know, coming out here, performing, blossoming, learning game by game. We are going to see uh, definitely a few of these players from these three countries one day play at a higher level, representing their country at international level, no doubt about it. Davina Perrin working that way on the leg side but straight to the fielder. That's over. So end of that fourth over, 38 runs on the board. Without losing a wicket, England very much on top of the game at the moment. So the worms, the red worm is flying high at the moment. Australia have to do something to drag it down. 87 of 96, 10 wickets in hand, England well ahead of the game. Australia needs something special. In the last few games, their go-to was Lucy Hamilton. She used to take the ball, come in and, uh, you know, pick up a wicket, if not at least bowl a few very accurate overs. They don't have her in this game. That's four more. Five wides to the total. Strain down the leg side was Clark. Now this is a poor start to the over. Yes, definitely a poor delivery. Way down the leg side, beating the wicket keeper too. No chance of the wicket keeper. Forty-three on the board for England. That's again down the leg side. That's another wide. She bowled a very decent. I I thought she bowled a good over the last one, the last ball of the last over. Of Clark went for four, but that was a good shot, a good cricketing shot. But here she's trying to probably trying to bowl too straight, hasn't got her lines right. Yes, Maggie Clark got to correct her direction this time, short and off the back foot and pulled away nicely over the boundary for six. That's Erin Thomas getting a six. Erin Thomas matching shot for shot with Perry, not holding back. It was short. Swirls on her back foot, deep into a crease, and there you go. That's 50 runs coming on the board. That's a good bit of batting by these two English openers. Getting runs quite easily. I think uh, this is uh, by far the best power play we had uh, so far. 4.1 overs, 50 runs already. 16 of 10 to Thomas, 25 of 15 to Perry. This is by far the best power play in these five uh, matches that we have had for any of the teams. 50 runs coming off, 25 deliveries, the partnership. Yeah! Playing across it, all around it. Clark bowling stump to stump, you miss, I hit. She's uh, castled uh, Thomas after the good little innings of her 16. Probably a slower delivery as well. We'll take a look at that one again. But this is a much needed breakthrough for Australia because England were all over them. Yes, uh, probably trying to play too square, looking to play towards that square leg region instead of uh, the mid on region. But she's got them off to an excellent start. Erin Thomas goes for 16, it's 50 for 1. Jody Grucock. She was brilliant with the ball in that last over, containing the Australian batters. Bowled very well today. Can she continue with the bat? 31 runs. High score of 31 as well. She's batted once, got 31 in that uh, 
game uh, versus uh, Australia in the, the last game they played. She put on that superb partnership with uh, Josie Groves. Yes, uh, Groves and Josie Groves put on a very good partnership against Australia. They led that fight back to bring the English uh, victory in that game. That's nicely played between the cover and the mid fielder. That's gone to the field boundary for four. Beautifully driven by Grovecock. What a way to start your innings. I thought probably Australia could have done better to stop that one. But to Grovecock straight away into a stride. That was a, a very good shot. The two fielders both diving but unable to get a hand on to that one. Short extra cover fielder and the middle fielder. Beautiful off drive there by Grovecock. You see the last wicket trying to work it away on the leg side. Missed it completely. Going between the batted pad. Fifty-four runs on the board. We are still in the fifth over. Seventy-one more needed of ninety-one deliveries. It's lesser than run a ball. Happy dugout there, the England one. A few smiles on their faces. Surin Kumar probably coming in next. Uh, she's a bit nervous, no doubt about it. Dot ball uh, to end the over five completed. Fifty-four for one. So 54 for one England after five overs. David Perrin on 25, Jody Grivcock on four. 71 needed of 90 deliveries. The way the English batters are going through, looks like it's going to be quite easy for them. But uh, you never know, Dambika, who has joined me in the box. A couple of wickets might change the game altogether. Definitely, Bolly. Taking a look at Eleanor La Rosa's figures so far. Three matches done outstandingly well for Australia. They've been treated with some scintillating batting by two English openers over the top along the ground. Perrin, especially, she got some power and beautiful timer. 71 needed of 90. England, uh, England definitely ahead. There you go. So good to watch. It's nicely played by Perrin. Perrin looking very confident, playing some lovely shots. The back foot, front foot, a lovely cover drives. Gone to 26 of 16 deliveries. Put England in a very commanding position at the moment. 74 more needed, 70 needed of 89 deliveries. As Ricky mentioned just a while ago, still a five delivery left to complete the first power play. By far the best we had right throughout the series. La Rosa, short and pulled away this time. But there is a field at the deep scarlet, just a single. Takes Crackwood on to Grivcock on to five and the score to 56. La Rosa, just the kind of clever operator Skipper Smith needing at this stage. They need to break this partnership and pick up a few wickets in a regular intervals that can bring Australia back into the game. Otherwise, it's just about keeping up the momentum. Perrin looking very good. Grevcock settled down. Five of five. So she's getting things moving. England looking solid for the second win. Perrin looking very confident now. 26 of uh, 17 deliveries. Given England a very good start with Erin Thomas. The Fuller delivery tries to work it away but didn't get hold of it. 
Spinning has been playing some very good shots all around the wicket. She missed out on first two games, but right throughout the series, she has been very energetic in the field. And today, even had the opportunity of picking up two wickets, unfortunately. Drop catches, stomping. Not the best effort in the field, but so far, batters make amends. Inside edge finds short square leg fielder for no run. La Rosa, like I mentioned, clever operator. Cutters, back of the hands, slower balls. So keeping the batters watchful right throughout after 6, 56 for 1. One more delivery to go in this over. 56 for 1. Very on 26. La Rosa back into this. Oh, that's nicely played. Uh, beating the cover fielder. That's going towards the boundary. As I was about That's to over. say, it's a good yeah. away. But uh, unfortunately, that was a nicely played by Perrin. Put away to the boundary. 32 Perrin, 60 on the board. After six overs, England 60 for one. Take a look at it. How about that for timing, Polly? Just got the bat through the line of the delivery, got the placement and... She had this funny knack of getting the placement with her shots. Classic example, she moves to 30, 60, after 6 overs. They see the umpire signaling the end of the power play, first power play. The best, uh, as we were telling you about, 60 runs coming in, 6 overs. England now openers and now Greg Grivcock have given them a very good start, 60 for 1 after 6 overs. So 65 more needed of 84 deliveries. Well, England, if uh, the Australians, if they don't get a couple of wickets, definitely England are going to run away with this game. There's no doubt. It'll be a walk in the park for English batters. Perrin looking solid, picking up boundaries at will. Bowlers under pressure. Williamson comes into the attack straight away. Into the deep, picks up another easy single. Stream of singles, boundaries, everything going well for England. Australia need to break up the momentum. It's all I think what the England batters should do at this moment is bat sensibly. They don't need to play any rash shots. You see the run rate requ is less than run a ball. Bat sensibly, get those singles there. You see the fans all the way from England. That's off the back for Perrin, put away this time towards the mid-wicket boundary, four more runs to her. She goes on to 34 and the score moves on to 65. Perrin really looking for the shots, uh, Damika. She's, she has always been in the positive frame of mind, looking for scoring opportunities. She has a good goal, got the techniques to defend it. Loose stuff, she'll pounce on it. Is definitely playing some lovely shots, particularly off the back foot, pulling and cutting nicely. Of course, she played some lovely okay. drives too. They are straight back, but a hard shot could have been taken. Got a hand to it, I think. Williamson. Powerfully hit, gone through the hands. Half stance, you could call it. Australia needing to stick on to the chances just like that. Yeah, that was powerfully hit burst through the hands. It's definitely got a hand to it. Williamson. Balling a first over. Six runs given away up to now. England 66. There you see Devin Aparin's uh, wheel wagon. Runs coming through. Straight down. Mostly straight down. That's Grivcock uh, cover. That's straight into the hands of the short mid-wicket fielder. Williamson gets a breakthrough. A full toss. Not a wicket-taking delivery by any means. But unfortunately, Grivcock straight to the fielder. Take a look at it. She could have hit it anywhere down the leg side. But finds the fielder. Safely taken. But not mistaken. That's... 
Briscoe, safely taken. Finn, I'm a, I beg your pardon. Lucy Finn, good catch. Yes, Grave definitely Cox. a good catch taken by Lucy Finn. So Grievko co walking back for six. 59 runs needed of 79 deliveries, but still England's top of the game. But Australians need to get those wickets at regular intervals to push that back. Perrin in particular, 35 of 22 deliveries. Abigail Novgrove in at four, right-hander, another very stylish batter. It's just about Australia creating an opportunity, opening up a window to enter this game. Good average, highest of 31. Decent strike rate. Show it once again. No grow. This is her opportunity to make an impression. Yes, Abigail now grow 31 against Sri Lanka. That's a full toss down the leg side, put away nicely. That's gone to the boundary. Four more to the English total. They move on to 70. Seven overs gone, 70 for two. They see the replay of that, a fuller delivery. That's nicely put away by uh, Abigail Nogrow to the fine leg boundary. Nogrow must be telling herself Christmas arriving early. Juicy full toss. Just helped it on its way for a boundary. England giving up the momentum. So it's a La Rosa to continue. La Rosa bowled well the previous over. Just giving away six runs. Devina Perrin is 35. It's nicely driven this time, but there is a sweeper cover in the boundary. Just a single. Playing beautiful shots, uh, Devina Perrin. Lovely shots of the front foot as well as of the back foot. I think That's English right. batters getting the measure of these conditions. Timing vastly improved. Not reaching for it. That's the previous dismissal. Reach, reaching to her right. That was Lucy Finn taking a very good catch there. Again, nicely played. This time by now grow. La Rosa might be wanting to make things difficult for the English batters. Bowling good line, good land. There you see a couple of spectators watching this game. They've been having fantastic time down south, enjoying cricket. There you go, coming down the track to upset the rhythm of La Rosa. Not providing too much pace on a good length, slower, variation in speed. La Rosa, very good at it. Yes, definitely La Rosa is wearing her deliveries, changing her pace very accurately. 54 needed of 75 deliveries. There you see another slower delivery, but this time pushed away on to mid-off, gets a single. The England batters should uh, try to work on those singles. That is what is needed at this stage. The run rate is definitely below the run per ball. They have their wickets intact. All they got to do is to work around the ball and get those singles and twos. No doubt, Polly. It's just about batting sensibly, getting singles, getting things moving. I think unless if they go on to make a terrible mistake, this is England to take. Devina Perrin on 36. La Rosa knows Perrin like the ball. Come on to bat. Slowing it down and on a good length like you just mentioned. And there you see the offside field. There is the short third man 
cow point extra cover and on the onside we have a short fine leg, a square leg and a deep mid on and a mid wicket right on the boundary. That's nicely played to a shot that man, that's a misfield, that's a long chase now. The batters cross over for two. Classic case of fielder looking up before collecting the ball, completes the 8, 74 for two, England in a strong position. Yeah, you see that previous one, uh, poor Miss Fielding that time, is uh, taking the eyes away from the ball. Gets a return. Devina Perrin, 38 of 25 deliveries. Led some beautiful shots in her innings. Confident looking dugout. England, they know, they've done the hard work in the field. Restricted Australia. And two openers, fantastic job. No Grove, keeping company. Perrin looking good. Williamson hoping something special. Yes, I mean. That foot punched away for a, another single. Another fumble. Well, when the batters call for the single, they look at the, take their eyes away from the ball and try to throw it in soon. Not watching their ball into their hands. Yeah, you see that again. Nicely driven. This time Perrine tried to have a wild swing at it, misses it completely. That was a fantastic piece of bowling by Williamson. A by beaten Perrine on that occasion. Flighted. Great deal of turn away from the bat and straight away. Not looking comfortable. Keeper, should I get hold of it? Hold on, that's, that's a good delivery by uh, Williamson. This time off the back foot and put away. Cheeky shot by Nogro. That's what you call playing the field. She straight away knew there are no fielders down the leg side behind the wicket keeper. Williamson slow enough. Ample time for Nogro to pick up two more runs. Once again towards the same direction. This time Fielder comes in, keeping it down for just a single. Just 59 on the board for two wickets, England. In reply to Australia's 124. They need 125 to win this game. Very much in the target. 46 needed of 68 deliveries. That's shown and put away nicely this time by Perrine. That's gone to the boundary for four. Four more runs to her. Takes her on to 42 of 27 deliveries. That delivery from Williamson got hit me written all over it. Davina Perrine, not the one to miss out. Got the placement couple of bounces. In fact, first bounce under the fence. She moves on getting closer to the much awaited 50. Yes, definitely she has batted very well today. She missed out in two earlier occasions, but today she has come good. 42 good runs of 28 deliveries, so 9 gone. It's 83 for 2. This is best we've seen so far from England. Look at the worm right on top, moving ahead. It'll be very, very tough for the Australians to pull this one back. Like I mentioned earlier, unless England go on to make a terrible mistake, this is for them to take. This is their game. Australia, there you go. Almost 10 runs per over, needing just 42 regulation stuff. Walk in the park. Well, definitely they got the better of the Australians in the first game too. They beat them by 35 runs. 
and that's uh, an appeal for an LPW, but I'm finding I'll dissolve one, not happy with it. Perrin on 42, no Grove on 9. England need 42 of uh, 65 deliveries. Do you see the replay on that? Definitely pitched out of the Ostam and missing the Ostam. Keeper Amy Smith trying out different bowlers, not working. These batters from England love to handle the pace bowlers. Spinners today for England, not as effective. I beg your pardon for Australia, not as effective during the previous game. Once again, gets it into the deep. Two runs easily picked up. Good work down at the boundary. Let's go this time down the leg side. That could be called wide. Yes, it is. Umpire Nila and this is signaling wide. Taking the England score on to 86. 39 more needed of 64 deliveries. There you see the replay on that. Down the leg side. No hesitation for the umpire to signal it wide. This time a better delivery but gets seen. Outside edge goes down towards the fine leg. Get a single to no grow. 87 on the board. There you go, needing just 38. Perrin looking good. No grow moving ahead. And England been held by very sloppy fielding as well as not so intelligent bowling by Australian bowlers from time to time sliding down the leg side unnecessary extras being provided oh what a shot that's another boundary to Perry in off the back foot pulling it away between fine and square leg to the boundary she moves on to 46 she's getting closer to her 50 she has batted very well today. No doubt about that. <laughs> strong on the front foot. Very strong on the back foot. Got the placement and two fielders looking at each other. For nevertheless getting closer to the half century inside edge. Another single wicket keeper gets it and throws down the stumps. By the time Perrin was in, moves to 47. England moving like a bullet train. It's 92 for two. One more delivery to complete the tenth over. Perrin on 47. No grow. You see Devin, Devin Perrin, 30 balls face, 13 dots, 8 fours, and 1 six. Strike rate of 156.67. That's very good batting. Want to no grow this time works away nicely. That's going to the third man boundary, but there is a fielder there. Just a single. That's Takes no right. grow one to thirteen and the England score on to ninety-three. So ten overs gone. It's ninety-three for two. Taking a look at the scorecard, Perrin looking outstanding, 47 of just the 30 runs, 6 and quite a few boundaries, no grove, vital support, 11 extras, Australians not looking clinical, they were hoping for a clinical performance out there in the field today in comparison to what they had yesterday, not to be Ricky. Australian bowlers uh, expensive all have gone over 10 runs the top three except for La Rosa she's been outstanding in this tournament she's bowled her left arm seamers really well two overs for 10 so they picked up a couple of wickets the England batters have gone at a canter the first uh, the first wicket to fall clean bowl uh, Clark picking up that uh, first wicket uh, and uh, then uh, we had uh, a good catch. That was a good catch uh, at that mid wicket region. Yeah. 
So the two wickets uh, that have uh, fallen today haven't really pushed uh, England onto the back foot. They have just uh, kept on going uh, at a canter. Their fans are enjoying, enjoying uh, the occasion, enjoying uh, the games. You know, relaxing in the sun, sunbathing, cool refreshments. You need a lot of uh, uh, liquid, a lot of uh, water, you know, uh, for these hot and humid uh, conditions, uh, no doubt about it. But they've come ever ready. You know, they have their, whatever you call it, their mats. Uh, and uh, they're enjoying uh, the Sri Lankan uh, culture here in uh, Hambantara. In the meantime, England are looking very dominant. After that uh, drinks break, a much needed drinks break, I'm sure for the Australian feeling side, they have been put under real pressure in this game. England batters, I mean, wherever you bowl to them, they are getting runs. No holding back, they are just toying with the Australian bowlers, playing both sides of the wicket really well, whether they spin or pace. Not letting any of the bowlers uh, settle down. That's a poor piece of fielding. Australians have been sloppy right throughout this game, and the bowler, La Rosa, clearly not happy. Zia naive. Zia naive clearly wasn't all that happy conceding a boundary she has done a good job leading up to this game but today England batters clearly approaching Siana with a planned attacking mindset working well this That's time it. outside edge lucky that didn't go to hand taking a chances no group they're trying to finish this game off as soon as possible, I think. That's what they want to do, try and uh, get a victory early. 47 of a 30, deliveries 8 fours, 1 6, a strike rate of 156. This has uh, been an excellent innings by Davina Perrin. 27 of just, uh, sorry, 26 of just 57 balls. Yes, you, you mentioned Eve, she was one of their better bowlers throughout this tournament. But England have attacked uh, right from the start, not let us settle down. In fact, they have not let any of the bowlers uh, settle down, and that has been the uh, key to this uh, innings, uh, isn't it, uh, Damika? Positive frame of mind, positive intent. It goes to show if you are approaching the bowlers with a positive mindset, uh, there you go, 100 runs on the board, looking comfortable. England, as I was saying, approaching the bowlers with a positive mindset, lot more runs to be taken in this pitch. This is a good one. Can he, can he? Make something happen. So one delivery left in this eve over. Catch it! Perrin goes uh, aerial. She was looking to play played much square here over the infield. Unfortunately, didn't get hold of it. 11 overs completed, 101 for 2. Scoring areas for Davina Perrine. Through third man region, very productive and long on region. 12 runs. So played all around, got shots all around. Beautiful innings. Still one shot of a 50, but deserved one. Is uh, very strong both sides of the wicket, no doubt about it. Sl shots are all around the ground today. She's been in excellent touch, excellent form. The Australian bowlers are taking their time. That's the England wagon wheel, two sixers, third in fours, a run rate of 9.18. They've run uh, the uh, twos and threes as well. So they have uh, really. Uh, Today, in today's innings, uh, they are really pushed up for it. Uh, the England batters, uh, we have a bowling change of Williamson. Two overs, uh, one by 18. And there you go. Is that the half century? No, Perrine has to wait a, a while longer. 
And you must have noticed there are only 20 dot balls. There's something to be learned for every team. Runs available on this track and That's gets it finer. Gets the half century. There are a few half centuries you've seen right throughout this series. This is my favorite. Yes, a wonderful innings by Perrin. 53 of just 35 balls. It has come at a very good rate over 150 strike rate you can't ask for more she's played shots both sides of the wicket she's attacked both the spin and the pace bowlers and she's been hard to stop the australians uh, haven't found an answer to her in this innings continues uh, on her way she'll be looking to bat till the end finish this game off take england to victory and just been uh, a, a wonderful innings so far. She got the help from Thomas earlier on, and since then, she has just a continued 150 strike rate. There you go, 169 for Davina Perrin. That's been a fantastic effort. So, after winning the toss, Australia hope for a better score. How about that for a pull shot? Perfect timing. I for a moment thought that was stayed to the fielder's hand. She found the placement. Oh, beautiful. Yes, sir. It seems that uh, the England uh, team wants to send off us home quickly today. They're trying to finish this game off quickly. And uh, probably go back to the hotel and uh, relax. They have found plenty of time on this surface to play their shots, isn't it? They just mentioned over and over, toyed with the bowling. They moved across their stumps. You know, put the loose ball away. That's what they have done perfectly today. If, if it's short, they have put it away to the boundary. Full tossers have been uh, put away. So they haven't uh, really missed out. You mentioned that 20 dot balls. That's because they haven't missed out on the scoring opportunities. Absolutely. They got the momentum. Never slow down. Never back down. Just pressing forward. Pressing ahead. Oh, Should be four wides. Five extras coming up. Australian bowlers are rattled. Williamson, no control over that one. Very wavered. No chance for the wicket keeper as well. Five runs uh, to the total. Just nine more runs are uh, required for victory in 49 deliveries. So this has uh, far been the best uh, batting performance by any team, I would say in the tournament when you take uh, take the three teams and the uh, four games played before this England went on to prove how powerful they can be to open us on the attack and after 1217 for two the crowd enjoying outstanding batting display by young under 19 english girls families friends on tour having fantastic time no growth on 24 they're in outstanding knock 55 runs taken at just 37 deliveries like i said my favorite half century looking at the scorecard Two huge contributions are from Perrin and Nogrove. 16 extras. That's a worrying sign for Australians, I'm sure. They'll be taking down notes about it. Oh, cheeky little scoop shot. Earning her two more runs. Oh, was it a run out? It looks like. We'll have to wait and see. She had to dive in at the last moment.
Time, very close one. Yeah. Yeah. For my, basically mine is not out. Really? I'm going okay. okay. yeah. okay. yeah. 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 Ask him more friends. <laughs> So there you go. Finally, a wicket uh, to Australia. It had to come up uh, with a run out. Bit of a mix up in the centre, but what a fantastic innings by a fantastic uh, player for the England under 19s. She's played really well. A beautiful innings by Davina Perrin. 56 of just 38. And uh, she's taken England close to victory. It's 118 for three. Amaruta Suren Kumar is here at number five Please, to put finishing touches. Required runs, single digit. Powerful performance from young English girls. As we mentioned the other day, Suren Kumar comes from a Sri Lankan background. Her parents uh, Sri Lankans. She was born in England though. And uh, that was that uh, run out. We'll come back. Uh, that uh, topic that was a, a good attempt in the field the two fielders and uh, run out by a long way had to dive in once again valiant effort oh. yes uh, so Surin Kumar uh, a lot yes, of uh, Sri Lankan background of course grandparents still in uh, Sri Lanka and uh, made a debut the other day against uh, against Sri Lanka in Sri Lanka she was very proud of that uh, uh, achievement and her father also is a very good cricketer and uh, for all of our viewers who are uh, listening her father holds uh, the highest individual score that's Essa Surin Kama 145 in the uh, battle Amen. in uh, Jaffna St. John's uh, uh, for St. John's uh, Jaffna he is the highest individual scorer in that big match which he set way back in 1990 the record still stands so coming from a cricketing family and uh, I was told that she even has two younger sisters who are still playing, who are playing cricket uh, down there in England. So it's good to see. No Daddy doubt, Daddy wanting Daddy to follow the same footstep. 12.5 overs. England Daddy needing Daddy just five more runs, like Ricky mentioned. England looking to finish it off quickly. Nicely played, straight to the extra cover field. Damika, what I forgot to say, those stats about Suren Kumar was given to us by our colleague Paulinus, who was two weeks ago in Jaffna at that uh, big match. So he has everything ready and what a coincidence it is, isn't it? I mean, uh, two weeks after, uh, you're seeing uh, the daughter of that record holder play here in Sri Lanka. What a wonderful game it is. 13 overs completed, 120 for three. All the bowlers had hard time. Briscoe, 10 and over. Eve, usually done well. 9.33 expensive. Only wicket takers were Clark and Williamson. They too went for plenty. La Rosa, only, economy, in only economical figures. Just 5 and over. 
So, just a shot away from victory. La Rosa, the most in economical, into the attack. Australia haven't been at their best in this game. Now Grove, she's been doing this for a while. In no hurry. She had the able partner, Davina Perrin, sending out energetic vibes while she was there in the middle. Outstanding cricketer. Bright future ahead, no doubt. Now, opportunity for Suren Kumar. She can finish it up with a boundary. Oh, she's off the mark on uh, Sri Lankan soil. She was out without scoring in that last game. So that will be a big relief. <laughs> you could see nervous out there, smile as well. Would have been sitting in the dugout for quite a while because that was a good partnership between, between Perrin and No Group. Very dominant. Scoring more than a runner ball. Putting bowlers under pressure. Exactly what you expect from your middle order batters at this stage of the innings. Is that it? Seems to be. They'll get one, they'll come back for two, but it will be four. Those are the winning runs. Rightly so from the bat of a no group. England have won by seven wickets. What a fantastic effort it has been by the England team. They have dominated right throughout Australia. When they were batting, they had their chances, but they lost the momentum towards the end. England got that momentum back. And since then, from ball number one in this batting innings, they just dominated play and beaten Australia soundly by seven wickets. Seven wickets hand and plenty of deliveries to spare. Power-packed performance by young English ladies. Best performance by England in this series. One against both their games against the arch rivals and comprehensively first game 32 plus runs and here by seven wickets they should give them a great deal of confidence and also improve their net run rate and i'm sure with this win they'll go on top of the table having won two out of three the only loss came off against sri lanka they'll be playing sri lanka tomorrow there you go, handshakes, happy faces. England were dominant right throughout the game. Given away very little chances. There were a few moments Australia had their say. But from the moment England restricted Australian middle order, not providing room to go on to score runs the way they like, they came back into this game. This is the last boundary. This is innovation, modern day T20 cricket. These young girls embracing it. Always good to see. Take a look at the scorecard once again. Erin Thomas, 16 good contributions, just 11 deliveries. Davina Perrin, 56. Outstanding knock. The best for me throughout the series. Just 38 deliveries. Gravecock, 6. No Grove, batted well. Not out on 30. And Suren Kumar, cut off the mark as Ricky mentioned. 17 extras, dominant performances. 13.3 deliveries it took. Yes, uh, Australia were not up to the mark. Bowlers expensive. You could see the economy rates. 10 runs per over to Briscoe. 9.33 to Eve. She was their best bowler in the tournament. Clark was uh, expensive though she picked up a wicket. La Rosa was the most economical. And even Williamson went for over 11 runs per over. So it has uh, been just an outstanding batting performance uh, by England. Uh, no doubt about it. So they've beaten Australia in both their games. 
and uh, their arch rivals. So England uh, on top in this uh, T20 Under-19 uh, series when it comes uh, to the two games versus Australia. Australia will certainly be looking forward to that uh, battle in the 50-over uh, game to be played in a few days uh, down in uh, Gaul. But a wonderful performance uh, by England. And uh, going back tomorrow's game, Sri Lanka versus England, the final T20 here. That's going to be exciting. Both the teams have won two matches each. Yes. At the first boundary of the bat of Davina Perrin. Nicely glide that one. Two point region. There you go. Love the hands. She was gorgeous to watch. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, Davina Perrin. And uh, Thomas gave her uh, that uh, valuable support right at the top. She played some uh, very good uh, cricketing shots as well. Good hands. And uh, Davina Perrin. Look at those shots. She was really uh, looking good when she was going through the offside that was the first wicket to fall Thomas playing around one from Clark then we had uh, uh, the uh, left hander who was in who played a couple of uh, good shots as well but Perrin continued isn't it she didn't uh, let go she just kept on the momentum she played her shots without any fear at all and uh, that was the no group she was uh, in fine touch as well. The couple of innings she's played in this tournament, she's been good with the ball. That was the run out towards the end of uh, Davina Perrin. And the finishing touches to this innings by uh, Nov Groove. And Australia have been, uh, you know, ball searching, fetching the balls right throughout this innings because it has been a dominant performance by the England batters. Once again, we now look at the summary. Dominant England winning by seven wickets. Australia batting first, having won the toss. 129, 124 for nine, in fact. Smith, skipper for today, batted well, 50. Lucy Finn, 36. Fairly useful contributions. Briscoe with five. And pick up the bowlers for England. Tilly caught in Coleman, three for 15. Grooves, two for 20. T and Eva Lee, 2 for 23. Grucock joining in. Outstanding final over. And in reply, England, outstanding. The best batting performances we had right throughout the series. Davina Perrin, 56. What a knock. Just 38 deliveries. Abel is supported by Nogrove, 30 of 19. Thomas, 16. And Grucock, 6. All the Australian bowlers had tough time. Maggie Clark picking up one for 21, one for 25. Tegan Williamson, one for 34, to have picked up wickets and uh, dominant victory. And uh, Sri Lanka need to pull up their game up against strong England tomorrow. Yes, uh, certainly one more game left. We have finished five games. Sri Lanka have won two, England have won two, Australia have just won the one. Tomorrow's one is sort of a decider. Who will take this T20 series? There is no final as such. But uh, England and uh, Sri Lanka going into the game have won two games apiece. So the winner will probably uh, be sort of uh, the champions of this uh, T20 series. No doubt about it. It's going to be an exciting game. Sri Lanka beat England in their last game. England will be looking to overcome the uh, Sri Lankans before that 50-over series, which will be played on the 5th, 7th and 9th uh, down in Gaul. So as I mentioned, England versus Sri Lanka tomorrow will be coming to you live at approximately 1.45 p.m. in the afternoon here from Surya Weber in Hambantota. So that's it uh, from all of us uh, from the Combox com and of course our production crew here for today. And we will be back once again tomorrow. Till then, it's a goodbye.